do a uh, wheel cylinder on a 1950 Dodge Cornette. Um, I haven't ever touched this one. I did the other one, and I was lucky this thing just popped right off. So we're going to see if I get lucky again. Obviously, you've got a cap, a nut, and a cotter pin, and you've got like a washer and a bearing. And, oh yeah, we're coming. Let's just get these off of here. Normally, this is the only thing that's fought me. It's been this washer. Come on now. Just comes right off. And these things have never been off in my, to my knowledge. Let's see. A little bit of pry action won't hurt anything. Feels like the brake pads might just be catching a little. Let's move that back. Let's get this off. This one actually fighting a lot more than the last one. I know this is still. Not bad at all for a car that's from 1950 that's never had this taken off, to my knowledge. And you know, just working it. Could break her loose enough. Yep, we're about off. <laughs> Don't want to break that now. And doesn't look too bad. Brake pads look pretty good. As you can tell, this one's definitely bone. Oh shit, that isn't even. Yeah, that's on there. As you can tell, mine. This one's blown out. <clears throat> Imagine that one's not too far behind, so I'm gonna replace both of them because, to my knowledge, they're original. So, basically, to do this. You've got your line that runs in between them. And you have these, which have a nut on the back. Remove that. Uh, there should also be a bleeder and a bolt back here. No, there's not. This is all that holds it in. It's just your line on the top one and a bleeder. You don't have to remove the bleeder. And on the bottom one, I believe it's just this nut. All that holds it on. And there's a bleeder on the back side as well, but you don't have to remove the bleeder. And uh, yeah, they're pretty simple. I actually don't take everything apart. Um, you can pry these out enough to get them off of there. And I mean, you're going to fight springs. Uh, so you got two different ways. Either take everything apart like the correct way to be. Or undo that. Pry it out. It'll come out without damaging anything. Um, or you can, uh, like I said, remove the springs. Plop off those. Do it probably the more correct way. But this is how I do it. This is a great time to look at all your bearings and seals and everything. Make sure your shaft's good. Regrease everything. Repack your bearings and do all that. Clearly I need to clean some crap up because of the leaking brake fluid. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it's done. I know luckily I've already replaced that line a couple years ago. So I shouldn't have to worry about that any. That's not too big of a job to do either. But I know you've got to... Neither end of that line turns. But it does up here. So it's terrible, but... You just kind of got to spin it up there, work it the whole way down, and then you can get it off. So that's pretty much how you do it.